Uh, I came to the Atlanta Writers Club by contact that was made um, at the first Decatur Book Fe Festival. Um, and those seven years ago, um, I uh, have had some tremendous opportunities to meet and to work with and to be inspired by and to be taught by uh, some of the very best people uh, in this business that, that, uh, that you can imagine. Uh, let's say a writer is like a potter uh, who sometimes works with the mud of words to create uh, objects of language. Sometimes it's very simplistic, and a pot or a, a plate or a cup or a saucer. And sometimes they make objects that are just absolutely spectacular uh, and reach the uh, level of immortality. For the past 100 years, members of the Atlanta Writers Club have gathered together to share their words, their ambitions, and to help each other learn the craft and business of writing. Today's meeting will begin with a special ceremony as the newest club president will be sworn in. The presentation of the President's Cups represents the transition from the past to the future. It's truly an honor to be asked to serve as the president of an organization with such a long and rich history, particularly now as we enter our second century. I wonder if the founding members of the club back in 1914 had any idea that the club would still exist a hundred years later. On April the 20th, 1914, the Atlanta Writers Club was formed by Lolly Bell Wiley and Mary Peters, with William Parkhurst as the first president. Initially, entry into the club was reserved for published writers and by invitation only, but over time these requisites were relaxed. And like in today's meetings, speakers were invited to entertain the crowd with stories and lessons learned from their publishing journey. The Writers Club met at the Atlanta uh, Library and partly in the Ainsley Hotel. In 1923, they moved to the Atlanta Women's Club, which was a much formal setting. It was a distinguished club and it was a, it was a wonderful place to go and um, as I fondly remember, men wore tuxes and ladies wore cocktail dresses and heels and it was very, it was very formal. Um, it had a sort of an elegance to it. Over the next few decades, the meetings continued to be held at the Atlanta Women's Club until 1990 when catastrophe struck. In May of 1990, I received a phone call that the Atlanta Women's Club had caught on fire and the mansion was extensively damaged. The immediate effect of this on us was that we had to find a place to meet and we had to hold each other together. It was sort of like we lost our identity for a while because, you know, it was a place where we could go, we could dress up, we could socialize, we had beautiful music. And then when we moved on to other meeting spaces, it just didn't work out that way. The year 2004 saw new President George Weinstein take the group in a different but determined direction. When I became president in 2004, the club had only 48 paying members and we'd sometimes only get 12 people at a meeting. So we changed everything. We decided to take the meetings out of Midtown Atlanta and move them to the Atlanta perimeter. Weinstein's Vice President Ginger Collins and President Marty Aftowitz continued the club's dynamic growth by fostering a strong partnership with the Decatur Book Festival. The rebirth of the Atlanta Writers' Conference followed soon after. So the Atlanta Writers' Conference was the biggest idea that Ginger had and that Marty Aftowitz put forth. This was an opportunity to bring in literary agents and publishers to Atlanta so our members could pitch them, get critiques from them, and learn about not just the craft of writing as they did in the 1940s and 1950s with their conferences, but also the business of writing. President Clay Ramsey added to the opportunities provided by the Atlanta Writers Club. From our earliest years, uh, in which we drew members uh, by invitation only from the elite of Atlantic society, we've since become a much more democratic organization in which we welcome people from all experience levels uh, and all backgrounds uh, and all demographics uh, into our group. As long as they are committed to writing and improving their craft, uh, then they're certainly welcome to join us. Wow, the club has done so much for me. I have grown as a writer. I've come out of my shell, I've grown as a human being, I've made friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life, and 
I'm just learning so much. I'm a different person than I was. The Atlanta Writers Club will continue its mission to help writers in Atlanta shape their own story and the stories they create. The Art of Words binds today's writers with those who began the club in 1914. We can't wait to see how our next century of efforts will help shape the saga of Atlanta and of its writers. Uh, human beings are storytelling animals, uh, and I think that uh, in the next hundred years there'll still be a need for uh, stories and still be a need for those who tell them well. I see Atlanta Writers Club as a survivor, um, and that as long as there are writers, there will be Atlanta Writers Club. What remains constant and will always remain constant is that there will be writers and there will be books, so there should be, there will be, an Atlanta Writers Club to serve them, to teach them about the craft of writing and teach them about the business of writing. All we need for another great hundred years are leaders with drive and passionate writers who are willing to learn. And I think we're off to a great start. When you reach those moments of uh, confusion, uh, the moments when you're simply tired of doing it, you need to be uh, rejuvenated. Nothing is better than a group that you're familiar with, you're comfortable with, and that you belong to, to help you along the way. Uh, that's one of the great contributions of the Atlanta Writers Club. The other great contribution to me is that it focuses attention on literary efforts that are being made in Atlanta and indeed the Southeast.